Hi, this is part one of a series of videos about multivariable calculus, also called Calculus 3 or even Calculus 4. My name is Bill Kinney. I'm a math professor at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. And in this series, we're going to be using a computer program called Mathematica to illustrate and do calculations and visualize things related to multivariable calculus. In fact, what you see here is what's called a Mathematica notebook in which I can do these calculations. This is also part one of a sub-series of videos about parametric curves. I actually have another series of videos about parametric curves where going in I assume that people don't necessarily have calculus and I try to quickly develop calculus tools to help you understand parametric curves. We will develop those tools here as well, but here I am going to assume you know some calculus at least a couple semesters worth. In this particular video we're going to be using two, two Mathematica commands called table and parametric plot to graph a parametric curve. Overall in this series of videos we're going to be following the second edition of Multivariable Calculus by John Rogoski, though if you have another book that would be great too. I would encourage you to take notes and try these examples on your own um, to help you understand things better. Pause the video whenever you need to. If you don't have Mathematica that's okay, but I hope you are inspired to try to get Mathematica to help you understand what's going on. Generally speaking, as far as the structure of what we do, I will go through an example in each video and write the solution down here and use Mathematica where convenient and necessary. And then I will show you an exercise at the end of each video and a solution to the exercise. You can pause the video and look at that. I'll actually show you that here at the beginning too, at least the exercise statement down here. You'll be able to pause the video, try the exercise on your own, and then check your work when I so show you the solution to that. All right, so time to focus on the example. What are parametric equations good for? They are good for modeling motion. That is one of the main applications. They have other applications too, but that is one of the main applications. So we have a bug here crawling in a plane. I imagine that I've imposed a coordinate system on that plane with an, the origin in a certain spot and distance and time measured in certain units, in this case centimeters for distance and seconds for time. The bug is moving in this plane the x and y coordinates of the bug are changing over time. They are functions of time and that in fact is the first thing I want to get across here. These equations that you see here are two functions that define the motion of the bug. They give you the x and y coordinates of the bug as functions of time. These equations are called parametric equations and t, time, is the parameter. That is actually the most common kind of application though the parameter doesn't always have to represent time, oftentimes it does. I want to emphasize that these are functions, both conceptually and for use in Mathematica. I'm going to define function names. I'm going to call the first function f and the second function g. I'm going to let f be defined by the right-hand side of the x equation here. So for a given input t, 4t cubed, minus 3 is going to be the output, and I'm going to let a function g be defined by the right-hand side of the second parametric equation, this one here. So the output of g at a given input t is going to be negative t cubed plus 2, and you should realize when you look at this expression that the t cubed would get done first, then you'd put the minus sign in front of it, and then you'd add 2 to that. These uh, functions then can be related to the system of parametric equations in this way. x will be f of t and y will be g of t. That's important conceptually to realize that those are functions and you can give them names like this. It's also important to help you use Mathematica to do various kinds of calculations. I will enter these functions into Mathematica now. So I go down here and I wait till I see a horizontal line there. That tells you that Mathematica is ready for input. I type a letter in this case f representing the name of the first function. Instead of using parentheses for the function inputs, you use square brackets around the input. That is standard in Mathematica. Parentheses are reserved really for multiplying things. You put the variable name inside the square brackets, and when you are first defining the function, you must put an underscore after the variable. That doesn't, uh, in general, that's not something that you use after you define the function, but when you first define it, you must put an underscore. 
You could put an equal sign next, but I usually like to do a colon equals. That's called a set delayed operator. It's not absolutely necessary, but I like to do it. I would encourage you to do it as well. If I type now 4t cubed minus 3, and then I enter this function by hitting shift return, the function will be entered. Oftentimes you will see output in Mathematica. In this case, when you enter functions, you don't see output, at least when you put the set delayed operator in there. But when I type f of t now, you will see that this function has been entered. There it is. There's the output of that function. Negative 3 plus 4t cubed is, of course, the same as 4t cubed minus 3. That is a function that is entered. h of t, for example, is a function that's not entered. If I try to enter something like this, it's not been defined. It only spits back h of t because I haven't defined it yet. Semicolons in Mathematica are a way to separate, uh, to suppress output. It's actually not necessary here, but I like using them to separate different lines of code as well. I will define g of t in this way, negative t cubed plus 2. These functions are now entered. Here's g of t, 2 minus t cubed. You can find their values at any moment in time. For example, I could find g of 2. You should try that on your own. You'd have to cubed 2 is first, 2 cubed is 8 then put a negative sign in front of that to get negative 8, then add 2 to get negative 6. The output of g when the input is 2 is negative 6. We will see this output here when we enter this function. Do a shift return, negative 6. That is the output of that function when t is 2. What's the first thing you should do to help you graph um, the parametric curve defined by these parametric equations? You should plug in points. In Mathematica, table is a way that I can plot points. Let me type it like this. Think of this as a point. I've, it's really what's called a list in Mathematica. I've got the outputs of these two functions separated by a comma inside curvy braces here. You can think of that as being a point in Mathematica. A table will compute values of that, that expression as t varies between two numbers. In this case, 0 and 2. If I don't add any other options to what you see here, it will plot, it will plot three points. It will not plot them, but it will calculate them. For t equals 0, t equals 1, and t equals 2. Those are the outputs. You should check that. The first point is negative 3, comma, 2 when t is 0, then 1, comma, 1 when t is 1, then 29, comma, negative 6 when t is 2. If I want to find the output of more points, for example, at every half second of time, 0, 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and 2, I would need to put an extra comma 0.5 in here to see those extra points. For example, at t equals 0.5, the point that I would plot in the xy plane would be negative 2.5 comma 1.875. So you, could, you should take the time now to draw us a coordinate plane and plot these points in order from left to right here, and then draw a curve connecting the dots. Actually, the curve will be a straight line in this case. Uh, but what I want you to notice when you make that plot is that these points are not equally far apart. They get further and further apart as you go along. You can see that here just with the numbers and you should see that with your plot. That's because the bug that's moving in this plane is speeding up. To end this video before I go down to the, exer uh, the exercise for you to try, uh, again this is the syntax for table that's going to help us see these outputs. I want to show you the syntax for parametric plot which will plot the entire finished curve by the way, these uh, uppercase initial letters are important in Mathematica, and in fact, this second word also needs to be capitalized at the start for parametric plot. You do want to make sure you do the syntax in exactly the same kind of way that I'm doing. Okay, here's a basic parametric plot code that is going to graph this. Now, we are going to see the curve. It's going to be a straight line, like I said. There it is. But we have lost something in just graphing the curve itself like this, the finished product, we have lost the motion. You don't see the motion here. It's not being animated to see the motion like you would if you were in parametric mode in your calculator. So we don't see the motion, we only see the finished path. In the next video we'll get into the actual motion to see it and to see that it's speeding up over time. But here with this basic parametric plot without anything else added to it, we just see the finished product. Alright, and again, like I mentioned, now to end the video, I'll go down here, 
and look at this exercise. You can pause this uh, right now and you can write that down. And now I'm going to move on to the solution of this exercise. It's for the path of a car. I define the functions. You must enter these here. You can see a table for this. Actually, I added more to the table. I added some table headings. I'll do that in the next video for the previous example as well. I also added t values over here on the left. So you see more than just the x and y, but you only plot the x and y. And here is the final curve. There it is. It looks like part of a parabola, and in fact it is. And we'll see if we can figure out why that is the case in future videos. But I'll end this first video right now.